Hello, my name is Robert Hollis. I hope you're having a blessed day. Uh, the title for the video today is What Are You Waiting For? <laughs> so honestly, what are you waiting for? If you've been following my videos, I've been doing a video almost every day uh, since the beginning of the year. And the whole reason for doing these videos is I want to cover every single thing that I can think of and I'm also going to ask you <clears throat> to share with me uh, in the comments on this video about, you know, so what are you waiting for? So, you know, I, I covered this, you know, we started out by doing the whole concept of, um, you know, where your belief is. Hi, Nicholas. Thanks for getting on. And uh, where your belief is. So when you're, and then I, you know, of course, I did a video on, you know, how to build friends. Hi, Lisa, Ola, Ola Nicholas. And um, the other thing that I was doing is, is as I'm sharing with you guys on how to build a following, how to be an influence, how to create a group of people that are following you. Um, the other thing that we talked about, of course, is the whole concept is once your belief is there, and I showed the things that, you know, you definitely, definitely want to believe in. Now it comes down to yesterday, uh, and if you guys want to, you can go to, uh, you know, roberthollis.com forward slash steps, S-T-E-P-S, and also just go to youtube.com forward slash Robert Hollis. And uh, hi, hi, Mafa, is it to Mafa? Okay, and John, hi, nice to see you guys. So the whole thing that we're talking about here is now that you know what to do, now that you know what to do, and you've seen me do it, uh, I've taught other people, they have done it. Now the question comes down why you personally are not doing it. So hi, Ali. Hello, my son. Thank you, Matthew, for getting on here. And so there's only Darlene. Hello. And so there's only a couple of reasons <clears throat> that I know of, only really two reasons, why you're not doing the things that I now have showing you to do. You know, so make sure that you, uh, you know, get your numbers in the boxes, right? And so here's the only two reasons, unless you guys, and I would love some feedback here, hi Norma, is I'd love some feedback here, is what is holding you back? No, what are you waiting for? So the two are, one is obvious, all right? One is, is you, you can get the belief on the company, the products, the uh, industry, the online marketing, using social media, <clears throat> all of that stuff. And, uh, but when you don't do it, then it's already documented. Those things are not on trial. Your company is not on trial. The products are not on trial. It all comes down to you. And so the only two things that I can think about that would stop you from moving forward is A, you don't believe that you can do it. You don't believe that you can do it. So, you know, let me let you off the hook. I, I totally understand this one. Um, is let's say for instance that, uh, you know, I wanted to be a figure skater. <laughs> you know, the thought of, being a figure skater uh, is A, I just don't want to do it, and B, if I needed to do it to earn income, there might be some physical uh, aspects to me, including my age, that would, for, you know, for, to stop me from getting success in that arena. So that's not a bad belief. You know, there's a lot of things that in your mind, if you just said, you know, I, I don't want that. I'm not interested in that. I'm not willing to put in the time and effort to do that. Uh, and it might be because of physical, you know. So whenever we talk about sports, I, I'm pretty sure I couldn't be a professional baseball player at this time or, or a football player. But then if I wanted to make money in sports, I then now would select a company or a something that I know I could do. Now, 
it would still take a lot of practice and a lot of effort, but I do see people my age and my size making millions of dollars and playing darts. You know, so I, I, could, I could play darts, I could play pool. There's stuff that I could do on the physical side that would allow me to go out and do that. So here's the other thing I want you guys to get is there also could be a situation where, you know, I learn principles and when I learn certain principles, I want to consistently, listen closely, I want to consistently do something that I know I could teach others to do. So see, there's a little bit of difference in my, my eldest son, uh, Robert Hollis uh, uh, Jr. Um, it's funny, uh, I, you know, me and him go back and forth all the time and he's really, really uh, doing well. I'm super proud of him. The difference is, is he loves selling. He loves going to, and setting up appointments. He even knocks on doors. Uh, the guy's willing to do whatever it takes to sell solar systems. And I said to him today that I'm really proud of him and I am. I just love overriding 2,100 people. <laughs> so some of you could say, oh my God, that sounds like, you know, lifestyle. That sounds like freedom. It's, it's, it's fun in making income by helping other people succeed in life. Does that make sense? So the reason you wouldn't do something is you didn't, you don't believe that you can do it. So here's the point that I wanted to make. I'm not aware, I'm gonna say this straight out, I am not aware that if you're watching this video live or recorded, I am not aware of anything that would stop you from doing what I do every day. My wife and I had an incredible conversation yesterday and you know, she was talking, she's excited about our future and everything that MDC is doing with Web 2.0 and all the incredible stuff that, that, that we can do with our future. And you know, how we could get more money, uh, how we could just consistently have a better year than we had in the last two years. And one of the things that she said, and I know my son Matthew's on here and his wife, Hannah, and it's like all of a sudden you get to this point and she's probably, if she's listening, will get to hear this for the first time, I thought of it today, is that if I'm good at doing this business, if I'm really, really good at doing this business, which I am, then if we're going to do something together as a family, and I've literally, literally since I was 27, 28 years old, I've been mastering doing this, then why would I want them to do something they haven't mastered? So let me just throw this idea out to you. And I will get to the second reason is that you know, we have a pool table and we have a dartboard. And, uh, you know, so during my birthday, my eldest son came out with um, my two grandkids, uh, Olive and Ryder and his wife, Amy, and we we're playing pool. And it's funny because, you know, instead of two people playing, why not have teams, you know, so you could have, you know, four people playing or six people ha playing. And one of the things that really, really I thought about is let's say that you're not good at pool, right? And you and I decide to be team members. And so all of a sudden you shoot and miss and shoot and miss and shoot and miss because you're learning. And then all of a sudden people say, well, listen, since, you're, since we're teams, if you want to win the game, you could actually pass your turn to Robert. <laughs> and if the whole goal was winning the game, then you could pass your turn to me and I could do my best. How many people caught that? It's like, it really, really blows my mind in this profession that when people struggle, that they won't pass the ball. They won't allow people that are already successful in this industry actually do the heavy work for them. 
that you could just get great at point guiding directing. And, and by the way, that's going to be my video for tomorrow is you learn a system where you allow the system to work for you. Systems duplicate, people don't. So it's hard to be really good at something that maybe I or another successful person has done when we pretty much dedicated 30 some years to doing it and mastering it. Does that help you? So if you're saying, why aren't I doing this? You know what I mean? Unfortunately, you know, the inviting the excitement, the edification, the promotion, um, you know, that's something that you still got to get good at, but you don't have to get really good at it to get people in front of the right information. So that's the first one. So I said, there's two reasons what, what's holding you back. Why aren't, you know, what are you waiting for? Of course, the second one that I know that you probably knew I was going to is fear. You know, False emotions appearing real, F-E-A-R, a false education appearing real. So there's this thing that holds us back. So hi, Eric. Hi, uh, Tasha. Um, I'm looking at some. Hi, Melody. How are you? Uh, Carla, nice to see you. Dustin, thank you so much, you guys, for getting on here, Danielle. Um, so again, you know, fear. And here's the thing that's just amazing about fear is I'm going to give you an analogy that, believe it or not, my mentor gave me. And it's sort of a funny one, but if you use it on everything, it's like if your fear, false emotions appearing real, if that's what's holding you back. It's like the, you know, we live in the what if world. You know, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? What are those people going to say? We live in the overthinking world. And how do you get past this fear? The only way that you can get a past fear is by doing. You know, so if a person has got a fear of heights, you pretty much got to get around someone that knows how to pe get people not afraid of heights. And my wife and I watch The Amazing Race, you know. I just like watching Survivor or Big Brother. I just love watching people and how they respond to psychology, right? Uh, for those of you that watch it, it was funny. The episode last night, um, they had to flip over, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of rocks to find a gold coin that was embedded in the rock. And I was going, wow, this is sort of similar to me talking about the sandbox in one of my other videos. And there's people that don't want to go through the sand, um, but it was these people had to. They had no choice to, but to get on their hands and knees and start flipping rocks over to find these coins that were like embedded in the rock. So my wife and I were looking and it was like, wow, you know, a lot of them are picking up the rock and looking under it, but it actually was recessed into the rock. And so my wife was like, they're not flipping it all the way over to see the gold coin. <laughs> so there's nothing more frustrating in the world, just like my scenario I talked about in the sandbox sorting, than you getting there first. You getting there first and you're flipping over rocks, you're flipping over rocks, you got a good lead, and then someone from another team comes, and now all of a sudden you got all four of the teams there. And then someone that got there after you goes, I found one, I found one. In that scenario, the amazing race, there's no way that you're gonna move forward unless you flip over the rocks. <laughs> you don't have any choice. So. In this industry, the way to get past fear is very simple. You just take little steps. And what you do in your mind is you think about the things that could possibly happen. And my mentor shared this with me. I know it's a silly analogy, but I'm going to share it with you here today. Is that he said to me, Robert, what is the most worst thing that can happen? Tell me the worst thing that could happen. And I went, oh my God, they could call me names. They could, you know, tell everyone in, in my family that I was doing something unethical or illegal. Uh, I just went through all these scenarios. And he goes, no, you're not even close. 
And he said, the worst thing that you could do is you could reach out to someone, try to connect with them, and they get so upset that they commit suicide. They go, I can't believe you tried to connect with me. And because of that reason, I'm going to commit suicide. And you're, I, I looked at him and I went, what? He goes, no, it can get worse than that. You try to connect with them and they go, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. I can't take it anymore. And what they do is they seek you out and they shoot you and kill you. And I looked at him and I just went, what, what are you talking about? He goes, I just gave you a scenario, a story about someone getting so upset that they hunted you down and killed you. And you're laughing. Why are you laughing? And I went, that's not going to happen. And it hit me. So I've learned to figure out what I need to do to become successful, to build a dream of what my lifestyle could be like. You know, what would it be like to make seven figures a year? What would it be like? Wouldn't it be nice if my wife has little notes all over the place for me and her? And it's like, what, what would it feel like? What would it be like if, like others in this industry, you could make a million a year and have it residual million a year? And I just went, Wow. So me connecting with people, they're not going to do that. And so what is really the honestly worth thing that could happen? Um, I don't know. They could call me names. They could block me. Uh, they could say awful stuff. Um, I don't really care what other people think anymore. Um, no, I, and, and here's what you got to mentally in your, say in your mind. If that thing happened, I would be okay. I'm going to be fine. I can move on. And so when you take the scenario and you make it as worse as possible and it sort of makes you laugh and then everything beyond that worst thing becomes something that, you know what, I, 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 I could handle that. You know, if I reached out to someone and they reject me, I, I, I can handle that. I, I totally can handle that. Then that puts you in a mentality of now you being willing to do. So when you have set your goals, you've, you're imagining on a day-to-day -day basis with vision, you're visualizing what your life is going to be like when, when then you'll move forward because if you're excited about the future, you'll move forward like planning a vacation. And what will pull you forward, like Steve Jobs says, you know what I mean? You know, you're, you're pulled into your vision. So for a lack of vision, people perishes. And I did a whole video on that. And so once you get excited about the future or what you're looking forward to, that will pull you in that. Now, if you don't know what to do, but with my videos, you do know what to do. So now, what are you waiting for? Only comes down to your belief in the abilities to do it, which I took that away. I love uh, uh, Melody's on here, and she says, Robert always knows how to make you lose all your excuses. Well, my mentor did that for me. Hi, George. Again, hi, uh, hi Norma. Uh, hi, Lori. Hi, Tina. Nice to have you guys on here. Thank you. And and so the next step is, okay, so now I got to put together scenarios that if I went out and connected with people, and then again, like we talked about, uh, uh, connect with them, invite them, you know, uh, what could they say if you said, I want, well, I'd love to be able to send you a private message, if you don't mind, or can I get your permission to send you a private message? I'd like to get to know you better. Hi, Zoltan. Uh, from Hungary, <laughs> uh, praying for everyone over there. Um, it's like, uh, do you guys get it? 
So that's the video for today. It's like, you got to figure out, you know, what are you waiting for? And I promise you, the bigger you can build your dreams, the bigger you can build your experiences, the more emotions, uh, the six senses that you can put in to really wanting to do it will pull you through the fear. It will push you through the fear. And for those of you, <laughs> thanks Melody. It's like for those of you that are scared to connect with people, you gotta mentally put scenarios in your mind that what is the worst thing that could happen and I already shared with you. And then you just have to slow but sure move forward. As you move forward, you'll get better. You'll get gooder and gooder. It will become easier. And then it will become just something that you do every single day, like driving back and forth to work. You know, there's people that out there that are deathly, deathly afraid of driving. Everything, there's so many things that you do every single day that people are really honestly in their mind and in their heart, they've worked up a scenario where there's no way they could do what you already do every day. So coming from my point of view, I know that I know that I know that you can do this. Connecting with people and I'll leave you guys with this comment. Me and my wife always talk about, people say, oh my God, but connecting with people is so hard. Compared to what? And my wife already always says, yeah, in the middle of the summer, there's people that are in Arizona and Vegas, Nevada, that are fixing, excuse me, that are fixing freeways. I can't imagine putting tar and, and fixing cracks in asphalt, out, of, out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> hey, Megan, so cute to see your beautiful daughter, man. That's, congratulations, happy birthday uh, to her. Not, we're not too far apart, and thank you very much. So that's simply who we are and what we do, and I know that you can do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about, uh, you know, how I teach people to point, guide, and direct. Uh, that's what I did. I just pointed to my mentor, showed his videos, and then found people at the right place at the right time in their life. And to think that Terry and I now uh, have 21,000 people, over 21,000 people that are responsible for our income. That's called residual, and that's called leverage. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I believe in you. If no one's giving you permission to succeed in life, let me be the first. Love you and appreciate you and see you tomorrow.